So we are going to prove that the set of real numbers between 0 and 1 is uncountable. In other words, there is no way to write a list of numbers, x1, x2, x3, x4, and so on, such that every number between 0 and 1 shows up somewhere in this list. No matter how we set up this list, infinitely long list, there will always be a number between 0 and 1 that's not in the list. In order to prove that, we are going to play a little game. So the game will look like this. We'll have the interval from 0 all the way over to 1, and we will have two players, player A and player B. Player A is going to start. They're going to pick a number between 0 and 1. So we'll call that A1. From here, player B has to pick a number that's bigger than A1 and smaller than 1. It's in between those two. So they will pick B1 right here. From there, player A needs to pick a number that's bigger than A1 and smaller than B1. So it's in between these two. They're going to pick A2. Now it's player B's turn. They have to pick a number bigger than A2, smaller than B1. So it's in between, they'll pick B2 here, and then it will repeat like that. At each step, the turn player has to pick a number that's bigger than the last A and smaller than the last B. So let's observe a few basic properties of this sequence. The first is that the sequence A1, A2, A3, A4, and so on is strictly increasing. And that's because at each step, we require player A to pick a number that's bigger than their previous A. A1 has to be bigger than 0, A2 has to be bigger than A1, and A3 has to be bigger than A2. Furthermore, we know that this sequence is always bounded above by 1. And that's because player B's first number is bigger than A1 but smaller than 1. So it's going to show up somewhere here. And after that, all of player A's moves have to be below B1 because A2 has to be below B1. And after that, A3 has to be below B2. But B2 was below B1, and therefore A3 will also be below B1. And we can do that at every step. A4 is smaller than B3, but B3 is smaller than B2 is smaller than B1. Therefore, A4 is smaller than B1 as well. So now we know that the sequence A sub n is strictly increasing, and it's bounded above by 1. And we know from calculus that if a sequence is strictly increasing and bounded above, then it has a limit. So we know that the limit as n goes to infinity of a sub n exists. Furthermore, we know that the sequence a sub n is bounded above by 1, so this limit will be less than or equal to 1. And we also know that a1 is bigger than 0, so because this sequence is increasing, this limit will be greater than or equal to 0. So now we know that this limit is between 0 and 1. From here, we can get to the proof that this interval is uncountable. In order to do that, we are going to suppose that we can write every number in this interval from 0 to 1 in a list. So this is what we are assuming for the sake of contradiction. We're going to say what would happen if we could write this entire set of numbers as x1, x2, x3, x4, and so on to infinity. We'll make this assumption, and our goal is to find a contradiction. In order to get this proof, I'm going to add one more rule to the game. And that rule will concern the choices of player A. What I'm going to add is, if A sub n minus 1 is less than xn is less than b sub n minus 1, choose a sub n equals xn. So here's what this means. When we're doing the game, at each step, player A has to choose a number that's between the previous choice of A and the previous choice of B. For example, A3 has to be between A2 and B2. So in general, a n has to be between a n minus 1 and b n minus 1. So what we're saying is, check at each step, is x n a legal move for player a? In other words, 
If we're looking at x3, for example, is x3 between a2 and b2? If the answer is yes, we choose a3 equals x3. Otherwise, a3 can be anything we want as long as it's inside of this interval. So the game setup is exactly the same. The only thing we're adding is that player A chooses AN equals XN whenever it's possible. So anytime they are allowed to choose AN equals XN, they will make that choice. Now our goal with this stipulation will be to prove that the limit as N goes to infinity of A sub N does not equal XK for any K. And here's the thing, we know that the entire interval from zero to one under our assumption is in this list, x1, x2, x3, x4, and so on. We proved earlier that the limit as n goes to infinity of a sub n is some number between zero and one. In other words, it's in this set, which means that this limit has to be in the list x1, x2, x3, x4, and so on, because this list, we assume, contains every number between zero and one. If we can prove that this limit doesn't equal any of the numbers in this list, then that would mean that this limit is not a number between zero and one, and that's our contradiction. In order to prove this result, we're gonna take an arbitrary value for the integer k, and we're gonna take a look at what happens in the game at step k. There are basically two possibilities. Either a sub k equals x sub k, or a sub k does not equal x sub k. And let's take a look at what happens in each case. Starting with a sub k equals x sub k. If this is true, remember that a sub n is a strictly increasing sequence. So if a k equals x k, then a k plus one is greater than x k. And because this is increasing, ak plus 2 will be bigger than ak plus 1, and all the numbers after that will also be bigger than ak plus 1. And that means that the limit as n goes to infinity of a sub n must be greater than or equal to ak plus 1. And ak plus 1 is greater than ak, which is equal to xk. So if a k equals x k, then the limit of a sub n is going to be bigger than x k. So in particular, that limit does not equal x k. So we've proved this result in the case where a k equals x k. Now we need to prove it for this case. So I've moved that proof for a k equals x k up here to give us some more room. Now we're gonna assume that a k is not equal to x k and try to reach this result. Now, we can split this further into two cases because if a k is not equal to x k, then either a k is greater than x k or a k is less than x k. Now this first case, a k greater than x k, is very easy because it's basically the same as this proof up here. If a k is greater than x k, a sub n is an increasing sequence, so all of the terms after a k will also be greater than a k, which is greater than x k. So therefore, the limit as n goes to infinity of a sub n, this is greater than or equal to a k, and that's bigger than x k, so therefore this limit does not equal x k. So again, I moved that proof we just did over to the side, and now the remaining case we're looking at is a k less than x k. What can we prove in this case? Well, remember, the rule of the game is that if we were able to choose a k equals x k, then we would have chosen it. So if a k is less than x k, that means that we were not able to choose a k equals x k, which means that this inequality was not satisfied. Now, if we look at this inequality, it's really a combination of two inequalities. The first one is a k minus one less than x k, and the second is x k less than b k minus one. So one of these two inequalities was not satisfied. If this is the case, 
this inequality fails, which means that either this first inequality fails, meaning that a k minus 1 is greater than or equal to xk, or the second inequality fails, which means xk is greater than or equal to b k minus 1. Now, if a sub k minus 1 were greater than or equal to xk, then that would mean that a k is greater than xk because a n is strictly increasing. And we already covered the case a k greater than xk over here. So we know if a k is less than xk, then this cannot be true at the same time. So the only remaining possibility is that xk is greater than or equal to bk minus 1. So let's say we take the case k equals 3, which means that this inequality is x3 greater than or equal to b2. Let's see if we can use this visual of our game to figure out some information about the limit of a sub n. Going through this progression of the game one more time, we start with the interval from 0 to 1. Player A is going to pick A1 somewhere between 0 and 1. Player B will pick B1 between A1 and 1. Then player A will pick A2, player B picks B2, player A picks A3, player B picks B3, and so on. And they keep going in between the last two values. So let's consider the number B3. Player A is going to pick A4 next, and A4 has to be less than B3. Now player A's next move will be to pick A5, but A5 has to be less than B4, and B4 is less than B3, which means that A5 is less than B3. And we can do that for all the rest of player A's moves. A6 is less than B3, A7 is less than B3, A8 is less than B3, and so on to infinity. And that means that the limit as n goes to infinity of a sub n is less than or equal to b3. b3 is less than b2, and from this inequality, b2 is less than or equal to x3. So that's a lot of inequalities, but the key is this limit of a sub n is less than x3, and therefore it's not equal to x3. Now we did this whole thing in the case for k equals 3, but we can generalize it to any value of k. In general, the limit as n goes to infinity of a sub n will be less than or equal to bk, and that's true for any value of k. But by the definition of the game, bk will always be strictly less than bk minus 1, and by this inequality, bk minus 1 is less than or equal to xk. So we finally concluded that the limit of a n is strictly less than xk. Now this case is the most technical of all of them, so let's quickly summarize it using the visual here. This is the case where we assume that a k is less than xk. Because player a will always choose xk if they can, this means that xk is not in this interval, and therefore it has to be above bk minus 1. So xk is going to be somewhere in here in the land of player b's choices. But player a's choices are always lower than player b's choices by the rules of the game. So as soon as xk lands above one of these, b1, b2, b3, b4, and so on, as soon as it's above this bi, player A can no longer choose it for the rest of the game because the rest of player A's choices will always be below bi. And so in this situation where xk is up here, the limit of a n will be less than one of these b's that's below the xk, and that means that this limit will be below xk. Therefore, we've shown that if a k is less than x k, then the limit of a n does not equal x k. That concludes all of the cases, so we've proved that if player A uses this rule to choose their moves in the game, then the limit of the sequence a sub n will not be in the list x1, x2, x3, x4, and so on. But if we assume that this list contains every number from 0 to 1, then that contradicts the fact that this limit will always be between 0 and 1. 
Therefore, we have proved that this set cannot be countable, and therefore, the interval from 0 to 1 contains uncountably many numbers. Now, this proof is based on work by Grossman and Turret, so if you're interested in that original work, I've left a link in the description, and you can find out more there.